So we've talked a lot about applications, creating applications, going through the, the projects of creating applications, risks of applications in the cloud. Well, we also need to talk about some secure coding techniques. Now, this is very important because when the developer is creating code, they've got to follow some secure coding techniques, right? They have to do things securely. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So let's start off with three different references that you could use for secure coding techniques. Now, this is not a secure coding course or video, right? We're not going through and teaching you how to securely code, but you need to understand that there are some references that you can follow and that it's very important that we do this and we test our code to make sure it's secure. So let's talk about these three references. Number one is OWASP, O-W-A-S-P. And that is the Open Web Application Security Project. And it focuses on web applications. And it is an absolutely amazing resource. And we're actually going to look at it in the next series of videos where we're going to talk about some common web application vulnerabilities and such. Uh, so we're going to do that in the next series called Application Security and Software Assurance. Another resource is the ASVS. And that's the Application Security Verification Standard, the ASVS. And then lastly, we have Software Assurance Forum for Excellence in Code, aka Safe Code. Those are three different resources that you should be aware of that provide us with secure coding techniques. So you can go out and you can Google them, you can go to the websites, and they will provide you lots of information about how to secure your code properly. And some of them, like the OWASP, actually go out and they list out many common vulnerabilities, and then they show you how to code properly so that those vulnerabilities don't show up in your code in your applications. So these are some great resources. Now, Part of secure coding is also configuration management and versioning. So let's jump over to configuration management and take a look. So configuration management, what that is, it is a super important part of coding as it allows us to deploy standardized pieces of code. So we'll say deploy standardized code. That is super important because if we can standardize our code, throughout our environment that we can know that it's all done the same way and it follows the same standards and it's all going to be secure. So really what we could end up doing is creating a library of code pieces and then we can deploy from that library because we know everything in this library is secure code. And there's two very popular tools that can be used to do this. Uh, the first one is Chef down here. Now Chef configurations are stored as recipes. That's pretty cool. So these recipes can be used to automate the building and deployment of infrastructure components. So really, we take these recipes and we can automate deployment with them. So really what it is, it's a template. We're creating a code configuration template. And that template is saved as a air quotes here, recipe. And then we can use that template to deploy infrastructure components. So that is Chef, that's the first one. And the second one is Puppet that we're gonna talk about quickly. And Puppet works by allowing you to define what you want the state of your environment to be, right? So basically we're gonna say, I want my environment to be like this. And you kind of go through and you set really a bunch of settings. You're, you're setting configurations. So here I'm setting, I'm gonna use these type of passwords. I'm gonna use this NTP server. I'm gonna use these settings within my environment. And then Puppet will go out and visit all of your assets out there that you have and make sure that they all meet this configuration policy so that they all match your desired state. So that is Chef and Puppet and configuration management. Next up, versioning. Now GitHub is a very popular tool in order to practice versioning. And the idea is that uh, developers or devs out there, they use a repository, AKA repo, to store their code, right? So a popular one is GitHub. And this really comes into play when you're using t a team of people as well. So you got a bunch of devs out there and they're working away and they have this repo GitHub and they store all their code up here. And they do it for specific reasons. 
One instance is uh, when you're using a code repository, we'll say we've got our code up here in different chunks, and somebody pulls down this piece of code right here. Well, it actually kind of puts it into a locked state. They've checked it out of the environment, and now they're working on it. And that lets anybody else know who goes to access this code, hey, somebody's already checked this out and they're working on it, so that we don't have two people working on it, and we end up with two different versions of the same code at the same time. That can cause some confusion. And when this user is finished working on it, well, then they're going to check it back in, and it's now back in the repository, and each time th these are checked out and checked in, we have version numbers assigned to them so that we have versions and we can actually go back and look at previous versions. So if somebody edits a piece of code and then it messes it up, well, we don't have to worry about it because we have the previous versions. And that's the idea of versioning. And those are some of the secure coding practices that we need to be aware of, especially when it comes to developing code in the cloud. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching and subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. And if you're interested in IT career or learning more about IT in general, hey, swing by cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.